everyone, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm back today with a pendant tutorial that comes from the Emerging Spring Collection that was curated by Stephanie of Bronze Pony and provided by Eureka Crystal Beads. So this project is something I was inspired to create based on 100% the contents of that collection. And I actually have two different pendants here that are using specifically the contents of that collection. I will leave the link to it down below the video and it may be sold out, but you can still get your hands on a lot of these specific items if you purchase them separately outside of the collection. And of course you can use all different colors to make this design, not just the blues and greens and golds that you see here. I'll also leave a full materials list down below with specific quantities of everything you'll need. Of course, you can see here we'll be using a 12 millimeter square crystal cushion cut stone, two different colors of super duo beads, some 11 and 15 OC beads, also some three and four millimeter crystal bicones. I'll be using about three feet of six pound fire line, which is my go-to beading thread. You can use whatever beading thread you'd like. And I'll be using a size 11 beading needle. Anything from a size 10 to a 12 should be just fine. So go ahead and thread your beading needle and we can jump into this tutorial. Here is a close-up look at the pendant. We're going to be making the pretty much same colorway as this one today. And what's interesting about this is it's got a different color of super duos on the back. So it's kind of interesting. Now you are more than welcome to use the same color for the entire piece. But if you'd like to use two different colors, we're going to start with the color that you're going to be using on the back. So we're going to start by picking up 12 of the green super duos that we have here to begin with. So pick up 12 of those. And you can string these down and leave yourself about a four to six inch tail. And then what you're gonna do is take your needle and go back through all 12 of those beads and then proceed through the next one as well to form all of these into a loop. So go through all of them again, one at a time if you need to. But as you do this, this will bring all of these super duos together. I've gone through all of them and I'm going to go ahead and pull this. I'll go through the next one right there so that we can have our loop. So you should have something like this and you don't want to pull this too tight yet because we're going to be putting in 15 O seed beads in between each of these super duos. So I'm going to start by picking up one 15 -0, and then I'm going to go through the next super duo. We're going through the same holes that we went through before and make sure your thread doesn't get caught up on a different bead. And then we're going to pick up another 15 -0 and go through the next bead and just repeat this step all the way around until you have a 15-0 in between each of these Super Duo beads. So I have my last 15-0. I'm going through the next Super Duo. And I'm also going to go through the next 15 0 and the super duo that follows that. But as you can see here, we have a 15 0 in between each of the super duos, and this will tighten up as we go. But the next step is to step up. And so we're going to step up to the outer hole of that same super duo that we're coming out of. And this is where we get to add in some of our other color. So we're going to add in some of our blue. We'll start with one blue super duo, go through the outer hole of the next super duo, and then we're going to pick up a green going through the outer hole of the next super duo, picking up another green, 
going through the next, and then a blue. So it's going to be blue, green, green, blue, green, green, and repeating all the way around. And we're going to end up with four blues that are equidistant from each other. And I'm just adding on the last green super duo, and I'm going to go through the next super duo like we would have, and then I'm going to proceed through the blue one because then we can step up. So go down now through the outer hole of the blue one. We're going to be adding on another row all around this ring and work with these outer holes now. Before we do that, I'm going to put a needle onto my tail thread and weave this back in, tie it off just to get it out of the way, and I will be right back. The next step is to pick up another blue super duo and then go through the outer hole of the next super duo that you get to. And then once you get to the greens, if you're using the same color, or the two super duos of the same color that are right next to each other, that's where we're gonna pop in our first four millimeter crystal. So I've got a blue one, I'm going through the next super duo. Then we're gonna be adding on another super duo in our blue. Then another blue super duo going through the outer hole of the next. Then we get back to the point where we have two greens next to each other. So we're gonna pop in our next crystal. So put that four millimeter in between those two. And then we get to the point where we add in a blue and a blue. Then our crystal. And a blue, another blue, our last crystal. And our final blue super duo, which we're gonna go through the outer hole of the next blue one, proceed through that new blue one that's on this outer ring. And you guessed it, we're gonna step up again. So we're gonna go up through the outer hole of that one and pull. You can start to pull all of these beads together. You can see that they are going to start to pull this into more of a cup-like shape. And that is perfect because we are about ready to put in our 12 millimeter crystal, but not quite yet. We are going to add in one more row of beads around this ring, and then we're gonna put in our crystal and tighten it all up. So now that we are coming out of this blue super duo, and we have the two blues next to each other, this is where we're going to put in our three millimeter crystal beads. So you can pick one up, go through the next super duo, and then you'll just be using a few 11 O's in this project. We're gonna pick up two 11 O's, and then proceed through the next super duo and repeat this all the way around. Now we are back to where we will add our three millimeter crystal in between the super duos there. We need to pick up now two 11 O's, go through the next super duo and repeat. Last crystal. So like I said, don't tighten this up quite yet. Just leave it kind of loose because we are going to pop in our 12 millimeter. And you can see I am actually just continuing on through this outer ring of beads. I happen to get through that three millimeter crystal there. We're gonna go around this again. Pick up your crystal and just set this in so that it is facing up like that. And at this point, you can start to pull this together and you can see that it fits very nicely around the 12 millimeter cushion cut. And we're gonna continue on until we get 
through the first 11-0 seed bead. You can tighten this up as we go. Every step through this inner loop that we're going through, you can start to get it as tight as you can. But once we're coming out of that first 11-0, we want to put a 15-0 in between each of these two 11 0s. So pick one 15 0 up and then go through the next round of beads until you get to the next 11 0 and be coming out of that one. Pull tight, pick up a 15 0, go through the next little round of beads, and repeat. There we go, and we have one more to put in. Keep pulling tight. And I'm going to be exiting out of that first 15 0 that we had added. All right. Now that we're coming out of this 15 0, we're at the perfect spot to continue on, and we're left with our 15 0 seed beads. We want to pick up nine of these. And then what you're gonna do is look at the back of your piece. We're gonna be going through the super duo that is sitting right behind that four millimeter crystal. So this is gonna wrap right over toward the back, going through that super duo, pull that strip with the nine 15 O's, and those are gonna sit right next to the crystal and on top of that other little super duo that's right there. When you're coming out of the other end of the Super Duo on the back, you're ready to pick up another nine 15 O's. And these are going to wrap around the other side of the crystal. And you can pull those down and go through the 15 O that's right there in between the 11s. And if you want to and you can all in one go just proceed through that next round of beads and exit out of your next 15 0 that's in front of the next crystal and as we pull this you can see that those 15 0s are going to hug the other side of that crystal so you should have something like that and now you're coming out of the next 15 0, and you're just going to repeat that step all the way around. So, once again, we'll pick up nine 15 0s. We're going to head through the back, the outer hole of that super duo directly behind the crystal. Pull the 15 0s right next to the crystal. Pick up nine more 15 O's. Head through the 15 O we started at, through the next round of beads there, and be coming out of that next 15 O. Then when you pull, you have your 15 O's once again surrounding that next crystal. So do that two more times and then we will meet back and continue with our next step. All right, so with all of those four millimeters wrapped with the 15 O seed beads, I went through my next section of beads and I'm coming out through this 15 O right here. And at this point, we're ready to attach our wire guard. So if you're using one, we can go ahead and attach that. I'm going to go through the first six beads on this right side of this crystal. Go through one more. There we go. And then I'm going to pick up an 11-0 and one side of my wire guard and string these down. I'm going to turn this so it's a little bit easier. 
Then I'm going to go through the other side of the wire guard and pull. Make sure your thread sits in the groove. Then pick up another 11 0 and then go down through the six seed beads on the other side. So just keep this symmetrical. Go down a few at a time and pull gently, making sure all the beads and the wire guard stays in place. And then I'm going to go around all of these again just to keep it even more secure. So I'm going to go up through those six 15 O's again, and then up through the 11 O around the wire guard, and down through those beads again. And if you are not using a wire guard, you can just make a loop of seed beads, maybe making a loop that's approximately five to seven seed beads around, something that you can attach your jump ring to. At this point, I'm going to follow a thread path to make my way to the back of the piece because it's still just slightly loose. Now it's not loose enough to where the cushion cut will fall out, but it's loose enough to where I think we can go back and tighten up that back ring of seed beads. So I'm just weaving back through in a way that's going to hide the thread, just gradually making my way to the back of the piece until I can come out around that center ring. So now we're on the back and I am just going to go around this ring of beads one more time and tighten this all up as I go. And once you do that, you can then tie and knot off your thread and attach your jump ring and your chain. I'm actually going to just start making a couple half hitch knots at this point. So I'll be ready to do that. And again, as I go, I'm just tightening this all up and it's just going to also be a good place to end our thread on the back of the piece as opposed to tying that off in the front. I'm gonna make another little half hitch knot right there and go through some more beads. And these could also make earrings as well, not just a pendant. So you can think about that and have fun with your colors. I think it's a nice surprise having the pop of green on the back, but Again, you could just do these all with one color super duo if you want to. I just was having fun using the contents of that Emerging Spring collection and really wanting to incorporate all those main colors in this piece. So I've already made three half hitch knots and am continuing on through the piece. It has tightened up a bit. You can just keep going until you run out of thread or clip that off whenever you're ready. I feel like I'm at a good stopping point here, so I'm gonna clip that off. And then this is where we can attach the jump ring and chain. The jump rings also happen to come in this collection. All of the findings were in gold, so it was very handy to have some of those practical items like jump rings and ear wires and some of the different things that were included. Actually, I'm gonna open this back up. I'm using a stainless steel gold chain that I had in my stash that's a little bit more delicate than the chain that came in this particular collection, just because I feel like this goes with the more dainty pendant a little bit better. I'm gonna tighten that up, and I should be using two pair of pliers, but I'm just using my finger to tighten that up. And that is what we have. And these particular chains that I have came with the lobster clasp and other component already which makes it very quick and easy to make a necklace. And there we have it. So this is the Tranquil Spring pendant. And here is the additional colorway. Again, just using what came in the collection. I wanted to use some of those golden super duos. And then on the back of this one, I have 
the green as well using the same types of seed beads and some of those other crystals that came in the Preciosa mix. And of course, that gorgeous green 12 millimeter cushion cut in the center with the beautiful AB coating that gives us those pops of blue that are showing up. So two different versions there that you can make directly from that collection if you had gotten your hands on it. Once again, I will leave the link to the collection as well as all the materials down below in the full materials list so you know exactly what you need. You can have fun picking out all different other colors from EurekaCrystalBeads.com if you want to make a totally different colorway. And even if they're sold out of the collection, you can still get your hands on all of these particular material sizes you need to make these pendants. So I hope this was enjoyable for you. And if you plan on giving this a try or have given this a try or anything else you'd like to say, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And please subscribe while you're here as well so you can be notified when I'm up to more beading videos and tutorials like this one. I want to give you guys a huge thank you for being with me today. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. Mm -hmm.